webinar. And then, welcome here at our basically last webinar <laughs> during this Corona times and before the summer season. So this is the last webinar in Amcham series of webinars and it will be a very interesting topic of uh, how to lay off skilled employees with respect. <laughs> we, 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 we hope that um, we will not need this uh, <laughs> knowledge and information in, in the future. Uh, my name is Uzana Totova and on behalf of MCHEM I'm very happy to welcome you at this webinar. Uh, many of you have been uh, in touch with me regarding our webinars uh, during this series. Um, and uh, well, I will be very happy to give the floor to Peter Durish and Mr. David Miller and Katka Milova uh, to, to tell us more about this interesting topic. So basically the floor is yours. Great, thank you, Zuzana. So I'm sitting here in the Kick Resume office with Peter Dudish. Uh, he is the one of the two co-founders of Kick Resume and the CEO. Uh, we're also joined remotely by Katka Milova, who is an HR communications specialist. Hello. Uh, Katka is an IO psychologist. She is an L&D consultant and she transferred into internal HR and works as a happiness manager. So she's really got her fingers on the pulse of what's going on inside of HR. And I am the head of B2B. So the reason we're bringing this webinar to you is because it's a very uh, important topic, uh, vastly related to the, the results of the COVID-19 uh, that shook the world. Um, we know firsthand the size of the companies, the amount of uh, employees being laid off, but a lot of it is uh, published publicly. And, but not all companies are. Currently in the EU zone, there's approximately a little bit over 7% unemployment. Uh, it's doubled in the US um, at this time, speculatively. Um, this has required talent acquisition um, specialists to go out and do something they've never had to do before uh, these days, which is layoff vast amounts of people and oftentimes they're even laid off so that's why we wanted to address this topic with you all um, because more now than ever before it is relevant and uh, unfortunately necessary so we wanted to address how to do it with respect and give the people that you're laying off the upper hand in the end so without further ado we're going to go ahead and start with our slides so 10 tips on how to lay off skilled employees with respect. So when we have eliminate all other options first, Katka had some good points about this. And Katka, if you don't mind uh, addressing this one. Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm glad to uh, join you in this webinar. So oh, I bet every company uh, which claims that people they put people at the first place should really make sure there are no other options in saving the budgets or saving the the money for the crisis and many companies i believe they freeze their budget for all necessary unnecessary events such as team buildings or uh, development or uh, they even uh, can freeze bonuses or planned pay rise also, they can reduce uh, working hours of, for example, part-timers or any any external supply. Of course, they need to uh, communicate about this a lot because people are very, very sensitive when it comes to money. But if they feel it's because the company wants to save them all and really keep them on board, uh, they Will, they will understand, like I, I bet majority of people will understand when they feel they are uh, treated with uh, respect, uh, they are willing to stick with the company and, and stay loyal. So this is very maybe a tip which helped. Great. Thank you for that, Katka. Uh, one thing to mention was that uh, the Harvard Business Review conducted a study in 2010 and it was uh, 4,700 companies that they that they interviewed. And what they found was, and these were during major crises, the best strategy during a crisis is cutting also operational costs. Um, 
like you said, Katka, cutting uh, benefits and perks, everything you can possibly cut before eliminating humans as a resource or your assets. Um, there's a, it was published last week that the executives at Disney uh, took a $1.5 billion uh, salary bonus while laying off 100,000 employees. So the Disney family wasn't exactly too happy about this. Mm -hmm. They could have cut other things first, for example, a $1.5 mm -hmm. billion dollar bonus. Um, and they did, when they cut 100,000 employees, they actually only saved themselves 500 million. So it shows you the mathematics there. There could have been additional cuts. Okay, we'll move into point number two. Be transparent and communicate. Um, Katka? Yes, so this is a hard topic for everyone. Uh, the management has much more uh, stuff to do than people, the employees can imagine, but really the team will really value if you are transparent with them and if you communicate, because if you don't, uh, people will make up mm, the, the, the stories, they will uh, not um, feel safe, they will feel insecure about what is going to happen and if they are uh, if they feel fear, they will start act probably a little bit irrational and it will be harder for you to really make them uh, follow some of your instructions or some of the changes you want to do. So really, even if it's hard, um, prepare some, some talk, share what you can share. Definitely, you cannot share completely everything, um, but really... Uh, stand up in front of the people and be be transparent with them. Great, yeah. Also, uh, depending on a company size, many companies still hold all hands meetings, either monthly yes. or sometimes even weekly. Um, yes. This is the time where they can really answer those questions um, in a very open and transparent way, yes. uh, even if the questions are about job security. Yes. Or you can also, I'm sorry, you can also share some surveys with them if you have more employees than, for example, 50 or 100, which is still uh, doable to really get them asked uh, in person. But if there is more uh, employees, you can share any questionnaire with them and you will have uh, their concerns like on a paper, literally. Sure. Great. We're going to go to the next point. Uh, number three, don't let the layoffs come as a surprise. This one is pretty closely connected to number two as well. Um, Katka, do you have something for this? I, yeah, I, I don't want to repeat my, myself, but this is uh, very connected with the uh, point two. So if you, if you know you will have to lay off the employees, you should prepare them slowly for that. Yeah. I would say that communication is needed um, even more if the news is bad uh, and the times are uncertain. It's best to, even when there's signs before it's detrimental, it's important to start maybe, you know, communicating this. So again, it's not a surprise. You know, we were told a month ago that the, it's not looking so good. And this allows the people to update their resumes, for yeah. example, and really to start searching to see what else is out there. Um, Incomplete information can definitely break the morale in the company. And as you said earlier, this can start rumors and it'll change the whole culture, probably towards the negative. Yeah, I would even add uh, a bit from maybe, even if it's not going to be as bad as, as, as laying off many people, you, could, you should, or we already have uh, done it uh, several times. We already communicated uh, when Corona started, um, how it's going with the company, how much uh, did we lose on the profits, and if we are going to uh, probably uh, laying off somebody or not. And basically, uh, because uh, the question came, and questions came from, from uh, employees, and they were asking like, how is going with uh, our revenue, how is going, if we are going to lay off somebody or not. So we just started to communicate everything clearly, and be transparent as possible. And even, um, we, we actually, we didn't lay off anybody, but we communicated uh, everything what we what we actually yeah, that's uh, great transparency helps yes 
And also what I think is important to really be consistent within the management team. You really need to make sure that line managers, top managers, HR manager, they explain the same uh, thing to the people. So that is not that someone is really like supporting the rumors or the, or the fear of the people. Right. Yeah, I think mixed mixed messages can also create this uh, this low morale and confusion, yeah. widespread panic ultimately. So yeah, you're right. Consistency is a great point. Uh, for those of you who are joining the webinar today, we have some good news for you. All of you will receive uh, free access to the Kick Resume platform. We'll go into that later, but it's worth sticking around. You'll have free access, I believe, until July 31st. So you'll be able to help others out with them getting what they need for some assets to get their next job. Okay, number four, have a plan in place before, it's very important, before you talk to the employees. This shouldn't be impromptu or impulsive. It should be well thought out. So, uh, Katka? Yes, I, I definitely agree. And I think uh, these little things such as really prepare what you are going to say, uh, at least first few sentences, because when you're under stress, I bet you know it, when you hold a pres important presentation or when you give a negative feedback, you feel stressed because it is not very pleasant situation. And especially laying off is not pleasant, not only for the person who is who is being laid off, but also for you. So really get prepared, uh, learn the, what you are going to say by heart and uh, make it as comfortable as possible for you too. Uh, and then I would say maybe these uh, little details such as really uh, take or take this person um, from their uh, office so they are not in front of the other people. I hope this is something really unnecessary to repeat, but really the, you should be just in private. It could be in the morning so that the person doesn't need to stay uh, or doesn't need to work all day and then you tell them, OK, but now you don't need to come anymore. Thank you very much. <laughs> really, it's maybe better to take them in the morning when they're fresh, when they haven't even started. And uh, uh, we recommend to you trying to really send them home for a day or for two days because really if uh, it wouldn't have to be good for the team who is staying in the company if this person is there. Maybe it's, uh, I bet they will not be happy for that. Sometimes they can be surprised, mad or, or sad. And it would be the best if you give them time to really um, go through this and settle down and then come back. Okay, that's great advice. Yeah, so you mentioned that uh, you really should be prepared for these discussions um, and you should almost memorize how it should go. So I was going to say that it should be rehearsed. Um, not, it should still be very natural. You can't not sound robotic when you're going to be targeting someone's emotions in such a way, like laying off. So, uh, but also be so supportive. And I think another important thing to mention during this is when you are doing the, the layoff, the act of laying off should be done pretty much straight away. No need to break the ice, talk about the family or the weekend, mm -hmm. just get down to it. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, be, be respectful and even empathetic. These are humans that are being dealt with, so it's important to bear that in mind. Okay. Oh, and one last thing. Emails, emails are not okay when laying off someone. <laughs> there are, again, stories coming out of the U.S., where you know a CEO laid off, uh, I don't know, tens of thousands via email. It was just the easiest way, but it's not. It's it's easy for the CEO. It doesn't mean easiest on those tens of thousands of employees. Mm -hmm. So, so like they, yeah, it's like they say you shouldn't break up through text, right? So this right. is probably the same. Yeah, good point. Okay, uh, go one step further. So I like this one. Um, because this is when a company can really step up and the individuals within the company who will still be remaining in the company can do a bit more for the employees who are going to be laid off. Um, Katka, do you have something to add to this? Yes. Um, as I mentioned, what you can do extra at least is to give them really 
extra day off or two after you lay them off or, and before they actually handed out their agenda. Um, what you can do for them is to uh, inform the team so they do not have to be the one to inform the team and really make sure everyone knows it is not about performance, but it's about the crisis, right? It's not something wrong with them, but it was a necessary step to do. Right. Um, really, this probably helps you to prevent uh, the rest of the team feel uh, threatened to and really it would decrease the, the more so. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, I really like the, like really nice example was the, uh, the Airbnb CEO uh, open list to all employees. And basically what he uh, has messaged to all his employees uh, was that he was really supportive to all laid off employees and actually asked also all employees that stay within the company to help those even financially or or with any management to in their life or or their uh, loans or whatever and he basically um, keep basically maybe only promised but but uh, he committed to to help all laid off employees with mm-hmm. will every everything what they actually should yeah, expect after. we were talking about this yesterday and the employees were able to keep their hardware their computers yeah, and things yeah. that they needed to continue you know. so basically he, he basically kicked them a little bit to to their uh new line uh how they could actually find a new job mm-hmm. because he gave them computers he gave them a support and 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 feedbacks how to get a job in a in a in a different company, or probably made their resume better. Mm-hmm. So uh, this was really supportive, and and yes, he he has done this point really exemptionally. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, I would say that's a good example, very good example. And there's one more thing that we can always do uh, when laying off. You can um, you can address the person individually who's being laid off about what is it that you need from us. That how can we help you. This is a transition in your life, especially in this really interesting market at the moment. Um, but I think even from the HR perspective or even upper management, it would be good to, to see what the individuals need because they're, they're, they might discover that there are some things that they can actually help out with that won't be too much of a financial strain on the company, a further strain. Great. OK, let's go to point number six, which is provide letters of recommendation. Yes. Um, this is an interesting one. Obviously, it's easier to do when the numbers are small. Uh, when you get into a, a hundred thousand like Disney, this can be a bit more complicated. But um, there are extreme cases in the world, of course. But I think that a lot of companies were only dealing with percentages. You know, um, that can be managed to create recommendation letters. So, uh, what do you think, Katka? Yes. Um... Like for sure, it's easier in a smaller company or uh, when you really uh, can make sure there is always someone who uh, who worked with them closely and can give them this letter. So I think uh, this could be the the solution for this. So it doesn't need to be you at the HR position to really give these recommendation letters, but you could play a great role um, while helping direct leaders to put this together. Uh, what you need is really to make sure you you can put down um, the list of their strengths, of their successful projects and why they're great to work with and really put this in the document or post it on the LinkedIn uh, into their profile. This also could help them to feel more, more uh, self-assured before looking for a new job and this is a great help for them because of course they could feel like less competent or less able or they could feel there is something wrong with them when they're being laid off but if you really go through all their strengths and successes together this could help a great right 
Yeah, and when posted on LinkedIn, anyone can access it ultimately. So sure. uh, any, any future employers who are just doing a brisk scan through their LinkedIn can already see that their former company supports them and they just maybe recently had very successful projects. So it's important to remind everyone that they're not being let go because of performance uh, deficits, but rather economic problems in the company. So, okay, great. Number seven, uh, give them time. This is a bit of a vague title, but we'll break it down a bit for you. So it varies from country to country, but in Slovakia, for the most part, employers have an obligation to provide a notice period. Um, and oftentimes they even do it for contractors. In the US, it, not it doesn't necessarily work like that. Um, but the maximum time you can give them, the better, because they're going to be transitioning. Um, firing from one day to the next, uh, sorry, laying off from one day to the next where the person comes in on a Monday and they never return starting Tuesday um, isn't going to set that person up for success and it's definitely not going to do much for your brand name because you'll be known as the company during the crisis who didn't give anybody a chance but just kicked them out the door. Um, so that's basically my two cents on, on that. Uh, Katka, I don't know if you have something to add. Yes, what maybe also I would say is a practice done by some companies is to give them extra day off when they're having job interviews, for example, right? So they can just go um, and take day off extra. They don't need to spend their vacation on this. So this maybe mm -hmm. is a nice gesture from your side too. Right, right. Uh, there's not every company is worth, uh, able to do it, but even if giving the employee an extra month somehow some some money just to transition them out yeah. um, you know it's not a likely it's not a likely scenario but uh, if possible this this is a huge leg up for the the laid off employee okay let's get to the next point so number eight help them find a job so <laughs> this one is more self-explanatory right so um, everyone has a network, right? Katka has a network. I have a network. Peter has a network. Everyone in AmCham has a network. Um, and But then you go even above and beyond that. All of our bosses have a network. Friends have networks. And with that network, you can really help hold this person up. Um, but one of the things I want to say is don't overpromise. You know, I'm going to get you a new job. We are going to get you a new job. That's overpromising. Again, this market is uh, a bit strange um, depending where you are in the world, but it has changed globally. Um, so over promising, the person will hang their, their future on your, on your promise. And when in reality, they should be actively looking as well. So um, Katka, do you have anything to add to that? Do not over promise is a very good advice through the whole process, right? Because sometimes when uh, the negative feedback or the negative news is unpleasant for us to share, we tend to really uh, make the person sure at the end that everything will be all right. Mm -hmm. Yes, probably it will, but uh, maybe you really don't want uh, be able to help them find a new job. But what you can do for them is to help them some, somehow, right? As Dave said, you could just share that you have a very strong candidate for the concrete position. Uh, what you can do is also, as I mentioned before, support their self-confidence. Uh, really uh, make like a coaching conversation with them, help them realize what they want to do in their next job, what they were strong at, what they don't want to do anymore. And this will help them to really apply for more, more um, accurate positions. Also get ready maybe for that the, the career market is a bit slower or that there are not that many open positions and make sure that the person knows it is okay. It's the uh, state of the market as it is, but it will really uh, get better. And meanwhile, they can really pimp their CVs. They can really make sure they improve any of the skills that is important to them. And uh, really, they can become more more prepared for a new for a new position, for a new job. Yeah. Right. I think also the like, like having the feedback on their resumes might yeah. be really good for them yes. because a lot of these people uh, have a 
huge mistakes on their resumes, uh, structural or grammar, and and I think like in in corporate uh, where uh, HR departments uh, having probably a lot of work, I think there is still uh, enough time to find find some time for these laid off employees and give them at least. Yeah couple of sentences, couple of uh, like really short feedback on their resume, which might just might uh, give them a better feeling even if they are laying off from this company. Yeah, and on top of that, um, it's all maybe it's also a good time to help the, those employees that are on their way out with uh, mock interviews. So, you know, Katka, who's experienced in this field uh, quite extensively, if she has the time to sit down with somebody who's going to be laid off and not only go over their CV, but also take the time to do set up some mock interviews, um, the insight that she could offer those people would be otherwise unfound, uh, un otherwise difficult to find other, outside. So um, I think this is a good tip or trick as well to help them. OK, let's move on to the next one. So benefits of creating a severance package. Um, yeah, Katka, you have some experience with uh, what this what the structure looks like of severance packages. So why don't you walk us through that? Mm -hmm. um, I'd say that uh, there are like few few dimensions of this. One is like more of a psychological support, which you can, uh, which I guess. Um, gives uh, you a great place to really show as an employer who does something extra for the people. Uh, from my experience, what very helps, uh, what helps very much is employee assistance programs, which is like a crisis intervention on the phone. That means that you pay um, the, some services which provides a psychological consult consultancy on the phone. Uh, and people really just can share with them uh, what they're afraid of. This is like uh, very nice to have. Then there is like outplacement program. That means that you help them walk their through this process, which is in front of them. That means, as we mentioned, help with the CV, mock interview or a, like a career plan. Mm -hmm. And um, then there are these um, like more of a um, practical, things which are additional payments or uh, uh, some insurance coverage or um, some accesses to job portals or uh, to some job fairs or something like this or um, logins to such softwares as kick resume is great cool thank you and so as we get to number 10 i'm going to I'm going to go to the next screen here shortly, but one of the things that we can do for these employees is provide a resume and cover letter builder. Um, the platform exists to improve the chances that someone can get hired. That's the foundation. Now, everything behind that are the tools that you need in order for that to happen. So I'm going to let Peter talk a little bit since he is the co-creator of the platform that just hit a million users about an hour ago. <laughs> so we were just having a small celebration, actually a dance party. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so uh, basically Kick Resume is a powerful resume builder that helps uh, job seekers to get a job faster by creating their resume, cover letter or website very easy and very fast. So, and what we actually created during these couple of year, years, we actually developed really a robust uh, process which is easy to use for candidates where they can create a resume builder and all these documents for, for getting uh, hired in top companies. Um, and uh, we actually go over, over this uh, really uh, scientific process of uh, designing resume templates where we actually uh, look up uh, to uh, reading heat maps of hundreds of uh, HR people, how they read, how fast they read, where where are the, 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 the basic, the best points where they are reading on the resume. Uh, we invited best typographs in Europe to select the best uh, typography for each resume, for each or several positions. Uh, so for every position we have different uh, resume with different design, with different uh, typography. 
uh, that suits the best for their positions. And we actually also uh, collected uh, over 20,000 pre-written phrases that uh, candidates can, can really easily um, reuse on, and after that rewrite. Uh, so uh, let's be honest, not everyone uh, has been born like a copywriter. So we basically um, make it a little bit easier for, for um, uh, not non-copywriter people to create their uh, resume like a designer and like a copywriter. So basically articulate their best skills and skill sets uh, as, as, as good as possible. And uh, we are actually right now, um, as, as David mentioned, we just uh, achieved 1 million users. And we decided when, uh, when this crisis came that we could share uh, our tool with uh, all laid off employees uh, for free. And Around the world. Uh, yes, around yeah. the world, and basically help also uh, like the both on the both uh, fronts. We we can help even employees and laid off employees to get a job faster, and also to companies to keep their good name and good branding uh, by by giving this this uh, this farewell bundle to all uh, their laid off employees. Yeah. So we, we, we set out on a mission, uh, I think at the end of March, beginning of April, and it was to try to offset global unemployment. So we decided that this platform is perfect for that. And so it was free for the world uh, to share, to use, to, um, to try to get try to get a job as quickly as possible. So we did, we collected, I mean, we, we helped a lot. The, the vast majority of users come from the US uh, primarily California and New York. Um, Silicon Valley is not what it used to be as of the last three months. Um, let's go to the next. Um, Katka, from your, your perspective, looking at what this tool can do, does it does it say value to you? When, you know, laying off, let's say, 100 people, if you can give them this tool for free, would you do it? Uh, yeah. It, I think it would definitely save you job with really correcting their CVs and would probably do a better job than you could do in this case. So uh, it could really be helpful for them. Like, of course, you cannot grant they will use it, but it's a very nice gesture. It will show them that you care. Yeah, and I always think about it as tangible assets they can walk away with to get, the, to get a job. So um, that's great. So if you're holding your phones, uh, you can just put it on photo and hold the, fo the photo setting over the QR code and you now have free access uh, to the platform. Feel free to share it with your colleagues. Uh, if you know anybody who's uh, been laid off, share it with them. Um, whether it's your neighbor, your friend, uh, you'll get the URL once you land on site. So feel free to utilize it. Um, again, it's our mission to try uh, to offset global unemployment. This is one way of doing that. If you have any backup questions, we'll get into Q&A here momentarily. Um, if you want to contact us after this webinar is finished, feel free. There's my contact information um, about anything, any questions, ideas, comments that you may have. Feel free. OK, so let's get into the questions. Peter will be going through them. Yeah, so uh, thank you very much for the for the attention uh, until now. And we got a couple of questions uh, here. So any recommendation in case you need to give an official communication about, for example, changes that might affect the job in case it's not possible to have all people physically present in the office due to COVID-19 situation? So um, I think, actually, I think I'll give this one to Katka. Do you, do you see the question remotely from where you see I, I can see, but I have to say, I'm not sure that I understand it correctly. Like uh, what changes that might affect the jobs? Uh, so maybe if it's- oh, really okay, maybe, okay, maybe if it's about the, the general, like how to make such communication, how to communicate such official things, what you can do, and MS Teams is great for that, you can do live stream, 
with your management or and with HR, where all of these messages are communicated, really make people to connect and uh, get uh, or make uh, uh, them ask questions. And really, uh, this is the way uh, we communicated these things that we really make live stream, then put them down into email and send them into the email then they put, then you put them into the internet intranet so that everyone really can uh, have them handy even though they didn't connect so I think this is a very nice gesture and also during COVID-19 when you cannot meet uh, uh, personally it is great way how to at least offer the minimum human contact and also to um, to really uh, put this human human aspect into this. Great. Yeah, Great. thank you. Thank you, Katka. I think that that might be really helpful information. Uh, so uh, the second question is, uh, I think this is the question regarding to uh, give a lot of employees a time. time. Uh, so by giving them time to think about uh, notice termination of their employment relation, relationship, are we not risking an employee going to a lair and challenging our actions? So what do you think about Well, this? I think generally contracts are in place, whether it's a contractor who's working for you or a full-time employee. Um, there should usually be, depending on what type of industry you're in, there should be an NDA and there should also be a, at least a basic uh, work agreement. Um, if it's in the agreement and they want to go get a lawyer for you giving them extra extra time or even um, articulating that there might be some troubled waters ahead that employment could be a problem for employees sure they may go to a lawyer but you know this is happening globally tons of people are getting laid off they can try to go to a lawyer but if it's a legitimate reason that it's a financially related layoff um, I'm not so sure a lawyer could do anything about this okay. unless there is a clear breach of contract. Yes. Um, in which case, oftentimes that has to be settled with some type of severance package. So uh, as from my understanding, Katka, I don't know if you have any, anything to add to that. I can just agree, but and you never lay off people without uh, any reason which is not in um, uh, work law right so you need to have uh, it at the work law every time right so uh, they shouldn't have a reason to go to the law lawyer if this is really correct yeah and that's a pretty probably a, probably wouldn't be a wise investment of that person's income uh, especially yes, since uh, it's coming to an end uh, to go spend money on lawyers but we have to treat people fairly uh, and, yes. uh, and be legally bound to handle the responsible aspect of this. Okay. Uh, is that the last question? That's all. Oh, yes. Can we go back to the QR code? It's still there. Yeah. It's on this slide as well. So if you didn't access the QR code, if for some reason you can't access the QR code, it should be working. Uh, but if you don't have your phone next to you, I know, hard to imagine, um, then just contact me. I'll send you the I'll send you the long form URL and you can access it. And again, this this link you'll have until it'll expire on July 31st. So you have more than a month to play around with the tool and help those who are in need. If there are any uh, last minute questions, you, you can also lift raise your hand in the feature in Microsoft Teams <laughs> and we can unmute you. Uh, or Zuzana can unmute you so you can ask a question. Yes, please uh, use this raise your hand button if you if you see it or just unmute yourself and ask directly. It's not that much of a number here, so so it will be it will be easily managed. OK, we'll give you a couple. We'll give you a couple more seconds. OK, if there's no more questions, then I want to thank uh, Katka for joining us remotely. I appreciate her insights as always. Thank you, Katka. Yeah, and uh, we're it's it, it is. I have to say it is bittersweet. Uh, reaching a million euros in most uh, software as a solution companies is a milestone that really should be celebrated. But on the back end of that, 
the end, we know why, and we don't celebrate the fact that so many people are unemployed right now, uh, but we do want to help. Um, so our heart is in it for the right reasons, which is great. Um, but it is, it's troubling times, and we hope that it improves soon. Um, but we're here to help, so feel free to send anybody that would like to have a discussion with us our way. We're happy to talk to them as well. So thank you again, Zuzana and Amcham. Thank you, Katka. Thank you, Peter. And thank you uh, to all of you who joined us. Thank you. I would thank like you. to also thank you all for being with us, uh, having these questions and, and also outlining this this topic because it's uh, it's important, but it's very painful. But I, I mean, we should be talking about that. So so thank you very much. And uh, I just uh, will uh, re remind you that we will have the recording uh, on our web page or our YouTube channel. So if, if you will be still interested to come back to the presentation or haven't had a chance to see it, so you will find it there. Great. Thank you very much. Have a nice summer break. <laughs> Thank you. you. You as well. Thank bye, you. everybody. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye.